It's about that time of the year again. The end of it. And as we go on to a brand new year, I feel like we should realize that we're also going on to a brand new decade. And to be honest, um, there's a bunch of magnets on my bed and they're falling. Like, I got a new bed. So yeah. So I guess I'll be saying goodbye to my childhood. Because I spend most of my life in this decade and it will be over by the time this video is out. So, as we head to a new decade, I feel like it's about time that we give an overall review on how Disney has done stuff throughout the entire decade. We'll look at the pros, the cons, and everything in between. Get ready, because this is Disney's 2010 Decade. Maybe this year will be better than the last. 2010 was the year that Disney animation started to not suck with Tangled. I mean, sure. It happened the last year with Princess and the Frog, but this was the first one of the modern era of animated Disney movies to actually be financially successful. Since Princess and the Frog was released the same weekend as Avatar. Although Disney probably thinks that the movie failed because it was 2D animated. Or the fact that the title of the movie was too girly. Which apparently was the reason they changed the name from Rapunzel to Tangled, and from the Snow Queen to Frozen. There were other films released that year, such as the first film in Pixar's sequel age with Toy Story 3, the first installments of the new live-action remake with Alice in Wonderland and the Sorcerer's Apprentice, and the first ever Marvel movie, I think it might have been Incredible Hulk, to be released by Disney after the bio with Iron Man 2. There were also films that I have never seen before, such as Tron Legacy, Prince of Persia, and... How the heck do you pronounce that? Secretariat. Um... Okay. I'm a little iffy on this year. I mean, there were many different starts, in this year, but there were only two really good movies that came out that year. The rest were either mediocre or just plain bad. I mean, to be fair, I haven't seen three of the films that came out that year, but from what I've heard, it's not very good. Besides, I've, I don't think I've ever heard any reviews from the secret... The horse movie. But hey, maybe things will pick up in quality next year. 2011 featured a lot of alright movies. Such as Cars 2, a big old fashioned train wreck of a film. The fourth Pirates of the Caribbean movie, which critics everywhere gave it an amazing... And Spooky Buddies, a film that I've only saw one Halloween in school and I forgot everything about it, except for the fact that there's a ghost dog. She's looking at corpse. We also got the last 2D animated feature film released by Walt Disney Animation Studios, Winnie the Pooh. A film that flopped. The reason wasn't because it was 2D, it was because it was released the same day as the final Harry Potter movie. When you really get down to it, the most recent hand-drawn animated Disney films being flops 
really have nothing to do with the fact that they're hand drawn. I mean, Home on the Range sucked. Princess and the Frog was released the same weekend as Avatar, and Winnie the Pooh was released the same day as Deathly Hallows Part Two. There were also films that you probably don't give a crap about, such as Real Steel, a Disney movie that you forgot that was even a Disney movie, Romeo and Juliet, a film that Disney didn't care about to the point where a sequel was made by MGM, Prom, a film that you only know exists because it was advertised on those 2011 Disney DVDs, and Marge Needs Moms, possibly the biggest Disney flop of all time. To be honest, the only Disney movie that came out that year that I actually watched in theaters was The Muppets, which was my introduction to these characters because of all that advertisement. And it was a fun little traditional Muppet movie with a bunch of wacky songs and fourth wall jokes. I'm wearing a different shirt because I've been filming this on separate days. And of course, the Marvel movies. There was Thor, which was the most eh. Marvel movies of all time, and Captain America the First Avenger. A pretty fun little adventure film. And I wouldn't normally talk about Disney Channel original movies on here, but dear lord, Phineas of Ferb, Cross Sec Dimension, great film, go watch it. I'm pretty sure it's on Disney Plus, but just watch it. 2011, in my opinion, wasn't a very good year for the House of Mouse. There were some good movies that came out that year, but a lot of them just weren't very good and just forgettable in my eye. But then came a little year called 2012, where the world was supposedly supposed to end. Okay, so most of the films that came out in 2012, I have not seen. So, yeah, let me just say the films that came out this year. There were two films in the Buddy universe, that being Treasure Buddies and the sequel to Santa Paws. And there was The Odd Life of Timothy Green, which um, I have not seen, but I recommend the Nostalgia Critic review of it. And there was John Carter, another huge flop that nobody went to see that lost a lot of money. That took place on Mars. I'm starting to see a little pattern here. So the films I did see. There was Brave. Which was quite an <laughs> Pixar movie. Then there was Frankenweenie. Which I feel was pretty underrated. And I think that more people should see. It's weird. And it's very like old school. And I think Tim Burton should make more stop motion animated movies. I'm just saying. And then there was Wreck-It Ralph, which, do I even need to explain why this is such a good movie? And then there was The Avengers, which was easily the highest grossing film of that year. And it deserved to be, because it's a really good film, and at the time, seeing six different characters all from different movies was just amazing. <laughs> Six. Just six. Just, just six. Just six characters. <laughs> oh, boy. oh, and I I just realized that I haven't done the thing for the the DVD thing for other movies, so I I I got DVDs of these two. You probably didn't need to know that, but <laughs> I can probably just sell these now because Disney Plus, but I, I still like these DVDs. I still want to have them. Childhood. Now, overall, 2012 wasn't that bad. Um, for a year, for the year where the world was supposedly supposed to end, I think that Disney did a Decent job with their stuff. Um, I still lost a crap load of money with John Carter, but they immediately got that money back with the Avengers. And um, 
Am I missing anything important that happened in 2012 for Disney? Like, not just like a movie that released that year, but like a huge event that happened that year that like a big purchase or anything like that. Oh, they just bought out George Lucas's company, Lucasfilm, and now they own own beloved film franchises such as Indiana Jones and Star Wars. Yeah, no biggie. This is a two part a part to come soon. So check us part two whenever it's out.